Good morning, church. It is good to see you all this morning on a communion Sunday and a beautiful day outside. And we'll give you the option to go outside at the end of the service today to celebrate communion a little differently than we usually do at this service. I want to welcome you here to First United Methodist Church. My name is Brad Corbin. I'm one of the associate pastors here. Welcome, especially if this is your first time or first time in a long time. And um, I'll also invite you to welcome each other in just a moment. I also invite you to turn to the back of your bulletin. We actually have a lot going on this week. Um, we want to give thanks for the beauty of the earth and the flowers placed in the sanctuary. They're given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Lorene and Roy McAlilly by their children and grandchildren. We have Vacation Bible School this week and we'll bless the participants in that later in the service. And then this later this week on Thursday, the prime timers have a potluck dinner and movie night. But there are many other announcements that you can read over as well. Now just as I've welcomed you, it is our calling also to welcome one another. So I'll invite you in a moment to stand Greet your neighbor, introduce yourself to somebody you may not know, and especially welcome any children that are in your midst. Let us stand and welcome one another.
Please stand as you are able. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as servants for Jesus' sake. For God has shown in our hearts to give knowledge of the glory of God. Sisters and brothers, praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.
The Lord be with you. And also Let us pray together. Lord God, who brings us mornings and beginnings, touch our heart to hear your call today. Grant us faith to rely on your extraordinary power in us that the life of Jesus may be made visible as we glorify you alone. Amen. you would pray with me please may our hearts and minds be like the young boy Samuel who didn't know the Lord yet earnestly waited to hear your word speak to us O Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit for your servants are listening amen you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it altogether. You pursue me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for you are fearful and wonderful. Wonderful are your works. You know me very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately wrought in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written the days that were formed for me every day before they came to be. How, prof how profound to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! If I would count them, they are more than the sand. When I wait, I am still with you. lesson is from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, here I am, and ran to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. 
But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord again called Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. gospel lesson this morning comes to us from Mark's gospel, beginning with the 23rd verse in the second chapter. Hear now the gospel of the Lord. One Sabbath, he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was the high priest and ate the presence, the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And then he said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. 
So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again, he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, come forward. And then he said to them, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger and was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Grace and peace to you this day, my dear and beloved friends. How wonderful it is for us to worship together this morning. How wonderful it is for us to sit in the pew with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I credit and share this morning the following introduction from Dr. Lisa Hancock and the writers of our United Methodist Discipleship Ministries. Well, this morning we begin a three-week series, a worship series, that utilizes uh, the songbook of the Hebrew Scriptures, Psalms. And we hear once again the call to be centered theologically on all things related to God. Dr. Hancock shares with us these words. She says that in the 13th century, Thomas Aquinas commented that in theology we study God and all things related to God. To that end, having a worship series that focuses on the doctrine of God may seem unnecessary to some, since everything that we do in worship is about God or things related to God. And yet, the mystery of God is what deserves our attention this morning. For so often we pray and we sing and we preach in worship in an attempt to make sense of all things. The difficulties in our world the miracles of God's provision, how to faithfully respond in difficult situations and questions. But worship is something else, isn't it? Worship is also a place to join together in our wondering, to try to come and, and understand, to wade into the mysterious waters of our faith and trust that whatever we might find when we wade out among the water, that we will know that God is there. So I invite you today to take that journey with me, for us to wade a little deeper into the water and to see what we might this morning, we will gather for communion. We will come to the table. And as we do that, we have the opportunity to reflect 
uh, on the profound intimacy that we find, uh, the intimacy and the compassion of God that is revealed to us both in the 139th Psalm that we read together responsively and also in the gospel lesson that I shared with you from Mark. For these passages illuminate God's intricate knowledge of us and God's boundless mercy to us. Oh, you know the familiar words from Psalm 139. Those words that remind us of the wonder of God's creation and God's deep personal knowledge of each one of us. The psalmist celebrates when the psalmist says that for you were created in my inmost being. God, you knit me together in my mother's womb. These words invoke a sense of awe at the intentional and loving relationship, the loving craftsmanship of God. Each one of us is fearfully and wonderfully made, known to God even before we were born. I invite you to think on that for a moment. Do you know that you are wonderful? Do you know that you are intricately made by God, that even before your mother and your father and this church family knew you, that God knew you. The psalmist assures us that God's thoughts toward us are precious and numerous. They are even more than the grains of sand. And if that is not enough, then we hear in the gospel reading from Mark that we encounter a Jesus in the midst of the Pharisees. A Jesus who comes and, and responds to those who challenge him about the observance of his work on the Sabbath. They criticize his disciples for picking grain on the Sabbath day and they later challenge and watch to see if Jesus will heal a man who is crippled. Jesus responds by saying, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. You heard the story. He then heals the man, illustrating that God's law is rooted in love and mercy designed for our well-being rather than the rigid observance of that law. Oh, church, how many times have we emphasized God's law over the call to love as Jesus loved, over the call to love our neighbor as we have been loved? Together, these passages highlight two key aspects of God's nature, his intimate knowledge of us and his compassionate healing love to us. And so as we come to the Lord's table this morning, I invite you to reflect upon those truths. First of all, to consider the deep personal relationship that God has with each and every one of us. Do you ever think of that? That God knows our thoughts, our struggles, our joys, our sorrows, that God understands us more completely than we understand ourselves. I'm thankful for that because sometimes I don't understand myself, okay? This intimate knowledge is not to condemn us, but it is to know us so that we might be guided, comforted, and led into the fullness of life that God desires for us. Secondly, let us remember that God's mercy and compassion is there for us as was demonstrated by Jesus. 
that in the face of legalism and rigid interpretations of the law, Jesus comes and shows that love and mercy takes precedence over those things. His healing of the man with the withered hand on the Sabbath is a powerful act that underscores the purpose of God's commandment to bring life and healing and restoration to all people. Oh, this morning as we come and as we share the gift of communion, the gift of bread and wine, I invite us to be mindful of God's deep knowledge and love for us. For God created our inward being. God knows us better than anyone. God knows all of us. I often wondered when I was a little boy, how did my mother see everything? How did she know, sometimes without me telling her, that there was sorrow in my heart? How did she know that that there were times when I was filled with joy or I was filled with sadness? How did she know those times when, when I had done something and she wasn't supposed to know it? But she knew. Because I was knit together in my mother's womb. There was something about our parents, our mothers and our fathers, and those who were very dear and close to us, that sometimes we don't have to tell them, do we? What's going on in our lives, they just know it because of the relationship that we share. And so it is with God. The bread and the cup are tangible reminders of Jesus' sacrifice, a testament to the length that God will go to restore us, to redeem us. Jesus' death and resurrection reveal the depth of God's love and his desire to make us whole. And so in this sacred moment today, let us offer our lives anew to the one who knows us intimately and who loves us deeply. Let us trust in God's mercy seeking to live out his command to love one another as he has loved us. And so today, it should be no surprise that we might do something a little differently. This morning, you will not be asked to come to uh, the communion rail to kneel to receive communion. I am going to invite you to go to one of the four stations at the end of worship and there to take the bread and the cup as a reminder, as a gift to us that Jesus gave his life that we might have life. And then to remember that we are intricately and wonderfully made, I invite us to go forth into the world, to go out maybe into our beautiful gardens that surround the church, maybe to look toward the heavens, to look toward the sky and remember that God creates, that God created us, that God creates all that is around us. And then our young folks will love this and then go home. You don't have to come back in. That will conclude our worship, for we will go forth into the world filled with the bread and the cup, knowing that God has created us. For those of you who might desire, at the end of our service, after we have served communion in here, Fawn and Brad and I will make our way to the chapel. And we will be there for maybe some of you who might need to come and pray. There are times in my life where I have needed someone to pray with me, to be anointed with oil. And so if that is your desire, 
you have a need, you need a prayer for healing, if you are broken and you need for us to pray with you, we will have that time. And others may choose to go into creation and be at peace with God. Oh, my friends, you are wonderfully made. You are created by a loving God who loves us in ways that we could never imagine. May that give you peace, knowing that when we come to the table, all are welcomed here. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you would stand and join me in the affirmation of faith, please. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Christ invites to his table all who love him and seek to be at peace with one another. Let us then confess our need for grace, confident of God's forgiveness. God, who formed our inward parts and knows our hearts, forgive us. Instead of acknowledging you as our God, we make our own idols. Instead of proclaiming Jesus Christ as our Lord, we proclaim ourselves. Instead of turning to the Holy Spirit, we attempt to attain your way in our own understanding. In Christ, we died to our old selves and became new creations. Therefore, we proclaim Jesus Christ as our Lord, and the life of Jesus is in us. Thanks be to God. Will you stand with me? <coughs> the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. like to offer a prayer for everyone who is helping with Vacation Bible School. If you would stand, please. Yay! Look at y'all. Let's pray. Our most holy God, God, thank you for this group of volunteers that will come prepared tomorrow to show our children the love of Christ and what it means, God, to be a Christian in the world today. God, be with them this afternoon as they decorate their rooms and as they prepare their lessons, God, and as we get snacks ready and everything that we have to do, as Dakota learns some dances for us, God. Be with us. May we always remember, God, that you're the best gift that we can ever give anyone, especially our children. God, keep us all safe this week, and may we be the light of Christ for all these children that we meet. In Christ's holy name, amen. Thank y'all. Now hear the invitation to the offering. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to our God.
God of every harvest, we offer our lives and the fruit of our labors to you, that we may proclaim the life of Jesus Christ, the true gift to all. Amen. Please be seated. And I I know some of them are in Bible school with us. I'm sorry. I should have turned around. Terry's helping me, so I don't want to offend her. <laughs> sorry. And now let us share together the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heights. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by his baptism, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it and remember it to me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that our Savior Jesus taught us to pray. Praying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory.